Now let's turn to Victorian politics. Former Premier Jeff Kennett has been considering whether to enter the fray as the Victorian Liberal Party president uh, to take on, you know, Daniel Andrews or at least get the Liberal Party in shape to take on Daniel Andrews because uh, there's, at the moment, there's basically no opposition. Um, you know, Michael O'Brien is, Mark Latham, what Paul Keating might have described as a wet lettuce. He's, he's so ineffective. <laughs> there's also others calling for, for Credlin to enter the fray. Uh, what do you think? Is it likely that... Um, that Kennett, you know, the Victorian Liberals need Jeff Kennett, don't they? But he should be running for Premier, not just for President of the Liberal Party. Uh, you know, Jeff's 80 in the shade, isn't he? I mean, he's tight. I think he's done, 70, uh, 73, not quite 80. 73, OK. Well, he looks 80. And uh, I don't think Jeff Kennett is the, the, the modern future of the Liberal Party. Um, you know, I, I, parties can get into a situation where they're so desperate, they look for the Messiah complex. Uh, let's parachute someone in from outside, in the case of Jeff Kennett, resurrect a figure from the 1990s and think that it's going to produce a miracle. Uh, you know, I like Jeff Kennett. He's a good communicator. He's played a useful role on social issues. But he's also still a divisive figure, isn't he? He's still at war with Michael Kroger and Peter Costello. I mean, they're old uh, feuds as well. So um, I, I think it's more important for state Liberals in opposition to get their identity and their policies and their purpose Right. Uh, we saw in WA this bizarre situation where they wanted to close down the coal-fired power stations, the WA Liberals, and, and go 100% renewables almost overnight, and they ended up with two seats. Uh, we saw them in Queensland campaigning on woke issues, and they uh, uh, got smashed. And their problem in Victoria seems to be one of what, what does a, a state Liberal Party stand for now in opposition on social issues, uh, economic issues, where do they stand on energy Policy. I think they've got to end all that confusion instead of, uh, Mark, you know, Mark, pitching did, at the did, Messiah did, complex. Well, hey, Mark, Aaron... didn't One Nation, didn't One Nation parachute in a Messiah figure from a few years back <laughs> who actually did quite well for them? Good point in New South Wales. <laughs> I don't know if well, Mark, I, I don't know, can you describe Aaron, Latham I mean, as a Messiah people, figure, though? I'm not, not sure Latham was quite the many, Messiah figure. No, not many people call me the Messiah. They just call me a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call you a lot of things, Mark. Maybe, maybe not Jesus Christ. Aaron, what about, um, you know, the Victorians are more woke than the rest of us, than the rest of the country. So, you know, maybe th that is one of the challenges for the Liberal Party uh, in Victoria is that it does need to have perhaps a slightly different identity to the Federal Party. You know, for whatever reason, it just seems to be a more progressive state. Well, speaking with the Sydney Harbour Bridge behind me, I should, you know, opine about how to fix Victorian politics. But they, as you say, they are a lot more socially progressive. And I did speak to Jeff Kennett um, last week, and he is meeting with the current president of the Liberal Party um, this week. They're going to discuss um, if Jeff Kennett can take over. And there is, I think, sort of some talk or thoughts about maybe a, a friendly handover. Um, problem is, Jeff Kennett is a legend, is, is, a, is a huge figure in Victoria, and he could dominate the whole Liberal Party down there. You know, people, the press, and, and the people look to Jeff Kennett to, to get a sense of what the Liberal Party believes or is promising rather than Michael O'Brien. So um, there's a lot of upside, but there's also some significant downside for the Liberal Party if Kennett comes back. Yeah, well, there you go. And when you spoke to him, was he keen, by the way? Look, he said, yes, yeah, he did. He did seem keen. Like he, he, he didn't commit on the phone to me. He said, this will be a fra fa faction-free zone um, if I take over, um, which I think would be very attractive to a lot of Liberals because the party's so badly split down there. But you could tell he was really enjoying, I think, the sense of being of the renewed political revel re yeah. re revelance. There you go. We'll see where that goes this week.